Hello everybody and welcome to this special webinar for our international applicants who will be joining us for the September 2022 intake. This session has been specially designed for those of you who are joining us from programmes in our physics, astronomy and mathematics section. This also includes our data science programmes as well. Um, now the session is recorded, it's nothing to worry about, it's just in case anybody's connection drops, we will be able to share the recording later so that you can watch back any parts that you missed as well. Um, so just to give you a bit of an introduction, my name's Kat, I work in the international office and I'll pass to colleagues now as well. Hi, my name is Caterina Carvalho, I'm a mathematician. And I'm also the postgraduate admissions tutor in the Department of Physics, Astronomy and Maths. Hi, and I'm Jim Geach. I'm a professor of astrophysics. I'm also the program leader for uh, the MSc uh, and BSc data science programs. And I'm the director of the Center uh, of Data Innovation Research. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, so we'll be hearing from my colleagues just shortly as well to give you a bit more information um, about your programmes and what to expect when you do join us uh, in September. Um, so first off, just to give you an idea of what the session is going to cover today, um, we'll be doing that introduction to your school of study and your programmes. We'll then move on to an update about start of term preparation, things that you should be thinking about now um, and things that you can join later on in the year as well. And then after the presentation slideshows are finished, we'll be moving on to Q&A. So if you do have any questions throughout the session, please do put them into the Q&A box at the bottom of your screens. Um, myself and colleagues will then be going through those after the presentation is complete. Thank you. Now, we're just going to do a quick poll just to see who we've got in the room today. Um, so we're just going to launch that now. It should appear on your screen just shortly. Um, and we just wondered which subject you'll be studying with us. So there's a few different subjects that fall under um, this category that we're covering in the webinar today. So you can join in the poll if you like. Um, answers will be anonymous, um, but I'm just going to launch that now. So if you do want to take part, you should see that popped up on your screen now and you can just tick to indicate which program you'll be coming to study with us. So this is excellent. I can see that a lot of you are already um, submitting your answers. So I'll just leave it open for another minute or two to give everybody a chance to take part. Just a few more people left. If you do want to take part in the poll, please do um, go ahead. OK, nearly 88 percent of you who are in the room now have filled it in. So I'm going to close this just shortly. So if you are in the process of submitting your answers, please do press that button now. OK, and we've closed the poll in. Um, so I'm just going to share results so that everybody can see on screen. Um, now, it looks like most of you in today's session are actually from the data science and astrophysics. We've got a few from physics as well. Um, it looks like students from the mathematics have been unable to join the live session, but they will be able to watch the recording afterwards because we'll share that out with everybody. Um, but that's great. So you've got a lot of future friends in the room for those um, applicants who are watching the session. So what I'll do now um, is I will pass to my colleagues just to tell you a bit more about the programmes in your school of study. Yeah, so that's me, right? <laughs> All right so welcome, everyone. Um, so I'm supposed to be telling you about, so if I think you can move the first to the first slide, please. Thank you. Um, so we are, um, you'll be studying in the School of Physics, Astronomy and Computer Science. And within that school, um, we are the Department of Physics, Astronomy and Mathematics. And the department has over 260 undergraduate and research students, uh, which are spread across the undergraduate studies in mathematics, physics and astrophysics, and now just starting now data science as well. And in terms of postgraduate programs, um, we're running top masters in data science, 
astrophysics and theoretical physics. And we also have uh, research students which can study programs in mathematics, physics, and astrophysics as well. We have the support of both the Juno project and the, the Athena Swan Charter. And as part of your postgraduate program, um, all our Toastmasters have an option of a one-year placement study or an advanced research um, program. And if you are studying both at the postgraduate level or at the undergraduate level, you can um, use our mathematics support service. And in fact, this is something that's open to everyone at university and you can use it to any question uh, that's maths related. Kat, if you don't mind moving the slide, please. At the School of Physics, Astronomy and Mathematics, we pride ourselves on creating exceptional opportunities for our students. Alongside your lectures, you'll learn in small tutorial classes where you'll get personalised support from your tutor. Our degree is balanced between pure, applied and financial mathematics, giving you the chance to specialise in the subjects that interest you the most. Our teaching staff are approachable and friendly and are experts in their field. Our Learning Resources Centre is open for you to use 24 hours a day. You can drop into our Maths Centre on campus to receive one-to-one -one help from experienced mathematicians with any mathematical or statistical problem you may face throughout your studies. We encourage our students to take a work or study abroad placement or a mixture of both during their studies. Best of all, we won't charge you anything for taking this opportunity. The placement year gives you the chance to gain valuable experience, explore career possibilities and makes you more employable after you have graduated. We have strong links with employers and can help you to secure the perfect graduate job for you. Studying a mathematics degree gives you the flexibility to branch off into any job role and industry you desire. Maximise your career opportunities here at the University of Hertfordshire. Thank you. Um, all these things that we've been looking at for graduate opportunities for mathematics, it clearly also applies for physics. Our physics, uh, astrophysics and science graduates have been um, employed in several locations. And in terms of facilities that you will be able to use in the department, um, we have, of course, um, very good uh, teaching rooms and amphitheaters. And in terms of physics, we have a new undergraduate physics laboratory um, and a high performance computing cluster that you'll be able to use. And our Bayfordbury Observatory is also equipped um, with the largest teaching, it's one of the largest in the country, and it's uh, very well equipped if you want to study astrophysics. Um, another thing that I think it wasn't mentioned in the video that you also be um, having if you come and study with us is uh, our personal tutoring system. So on top of your uh, taught classes, you'll also meet with your personal tutor on a bi-weekly basis, and they will be able to support you with your studies and career options and all the things that you need when you come to study with us. So you'll be fully supported to, um, during your studies here as well. Kat, if you could please move, thank you. Uh, so this next video is about the Bayford Bury Observatory. There are no fences in the sky, there are no borders in the sky. The sky belongs to us all. It's perhaps the next great undiscovered wilderness. And our role at the Bayfordbury Observatory is to watch and watch over the sky. We have three roles at the university. One is education. We run an undergraduate degree here where you can study astronomy for a degree. The second is outreach where members of the general public come and use these telescopes. And the third is research, which we'll describe to you a little bit later on. 
I think um, one of the things we try to foster in the arts really is the idea that art isn't really just about self-expression. It's really about giving voice to and making visible things which we haven't looked at more fully. And astronomy is the very epitome of that. Astronomy is constantly making visible to us things which are not visible. What's out there? Why, why is what's out there out there? And how does it work? So we see all these amazing things in the night. It's interesting to find out what they are, how they got there, and where they're going to be in the future, and how they work. The atmospheric physics that we do here is studying very carefully what happens in the air above us. The arts and the sciences have a kind of synergy in this respect. They cause us to consider and really reflect on the nature of phenomena, and also to see the, the extraordinary magisterium of things. We've made an incredible contribution to finding alien planets, which is one of the most exciting fields in modern astronomy. We're finding new and exciting planets almost constantly now. I'm Dr Mark Galloway, I'm the Principal Technical Officer at the Observatory. I'm responsible for the equipment and the facilities here. Here we've got a uh, website that hosts our all-sky cameras. One is a nighttime all-sky camera, so it can be used, for example, for tracking meteorites or looking at other uh, interesting astronomical events, while the other one is a daytime all-sky camera, which in turn allows us to look at um, various curious uh, phenomena seen during the day. So this is an example of uh, a type of meteor called a fireball uh, entering the Earth's atmosphere which we picked up on an all-sky camera and this typically would be the size of a house brick and it will be entering the atmosphere at about 22,000 miles an hour at about an altitude of 80 kilometres. Here I've actually got um, one of the meteors which has made it down to the Earth. Um, this is an iron nickel one so this would have come from the core of one of the bodies which formed the planets when the solar system was forming. So this is uh, a piece of metal which is 4.5 billion years old. So this is older than the Earth. This will have come from one of the bodies which formed planets like the Earth. Um, in much the same way that Earth has got a metal core, this will have formed the core of one of the early bodies in the solar system. A place like this is actually starting to be um, coming into its own again, really, in that the telescopes that we've got here, um, and they're now being set up to be used in a robotic mode which actually creates the opportunity to use them for a time domain astronomy, as we like to call it. That means following up on objects that vary. They can be supernovae, they can be exploding stars called novae, or manner of changing things in the night sky, because the night sky is changing all the time. Most of the telescopes here have digital cameras attached, but one of the thrills of astronomy sometimes is to just look. So this is one of our automated telescopes and instead of looking through an eyepiece most of the time here we use what's called a CCD camera and that's very similar to the digital cameras you have at home or, or on your phone. It's a lot more sensitive and it only takes pictures in black and white. Uh, so to get colour photos instead of uh, you know just taking one shot we do is take lots of shots using different filters that only let a certain amount of light through and then we combine those images together and we get a nice colour image. We have an artist in residence scheme going, which is uh, tremendously exciting. We've had uh, a student called Reggie Valkenborough who did a degree with us. She specialised in pinhole photography and has actually done a, a solar graph, which is a, a rather beautiful, exquisite photograph, which charts the movement of the sun across the sky throughout the course of the year. Some students, as a part of their undergraduate degree, undertake a year abroad, uh, working at a professional telescope in a different country. And they can apply the techniques they've used, learnt on these telescopes to the telescopes when they arrive and they can really hit the ground running. I'm Liz Dodds and I'm currently a research student at the University of Hertfordshire. I did my undergrad degree and I had a placement year in Tenerife in the Canary Islands. So during my placement year in Tenerife I had the great opportunity to go to La Palma and have a night observing at the telescopes. We don't just use an observatory like this at night, we can use it during the daytime. I said earlier we looked after the skies and what I had in mind, one of the things I had in mind was the atmospheric research that's done here. We use the LIDAR to, to probe the atmosphere by sending a sharp pulse of light out and looking for the light that's scattered back from various things in the, in the atmosphere. We can profile the atmosphere and look very, very carefully at all of the constituents. We are now on the building of the Science Learning Centre and what we've got behind me is an instrument called a sun photometer. Like some of our telescope, it's a robotic system, so it can do measurements automatically, either remotely or completely without human intervention. Well, these days there's a growing opportunity for sites like this. 
with a set of telescopes that can be actually set up as robotic telescopes that can take advantage of any good weather that turns up. And in wider astronomy presently, there's a growing interest in time domain astronomy again. In fact, this is a subject that used to actually be even more popular um, in the past, but is actually coming back in a big way. And these telescopes now are able to do this and will be able to do some cutting edge science. So there you have it. That's our whistle stop tour of the observatory. Look forward to seeing you here again soon. Hi everyone, this is uh, Jim Geach now. So um, I guess most of you on the on the call are interested in the, the, the data science program, but just worth noting that our, our physics and maths degrees are accredited by professional bodies. So the Institute of Physics and the Institute of Mathematics and its applications. Uh, and when you graduate, you'll be eligible for membership of one of these bodies. Um, it's important to note that um, there's a lot of support for your ongoing career. And so the careers and employment team at the university provide ongoing um, support for you in, in finding employment after your degree. Uh, and we have a, a very high rate of, of graduate employment from the University of Hertfordshire. Um, so we're a heavily research focused um, group. Um, and our degree courses are really um, are designed to provide you with opportunity to, to work on real life projects in industry or in, in research uh, before you graduate through, through project work and investigations. So I'll just say a little bit about the research we do um, in the department, because uh, we have quite a, quite a large group. Um, so we have a, an astrophysics group. Uh, it's one, actually one of the, the largest in the UK. Uh, and our astrophysics research really covers the full range of, of astrophysics environments from um, uh, exoplanets in our own galaxy. In fact, our group was involved in, in the discovery of the, the nearest exoplanet uh, to the Earth in, in, in Proxima, uh, right through to studies of the galaxy itself and even beyond to, to the extragalactic universe uh, understanding the, the evolution of, of galaxies across cosmic time. Our physics research group um, is, is well-renowned, uh, especially in the astro, um, in atmospheric physics, uh, particle detection and characterization, um, and that research has led to, to the uh, uh, real applications in, in the world, uh, a recent example being asbestos detection. Uh, Katharina is a mathematician and uh, our, mathemat our mathematics research uh, spans a, a wide range of topics, um, optimization, algebra, and also its applications to the theoretical computer science of so things like the development of, of new algorithms. And most recently, we've been um, developing our, our data science research and teaching. So astrophysics especially is a data-driven science. Uh, we realized that there's huge opportunity for um, cross-disciplinary research between research groups. So, for example, between astrophysics research and medical research, because those topics involve imaging, which is a form of data. Uh, and that's a group that I head up. So I'm an astrophysicist, but I also head up the, the Center of Data Innovation Research, which is really looking at how we can apply things like machine learning techniques um, across different disciplines. Uh, so next slide, please. So let me tell you a little bit about uh, our data science teaching. So as you, as you probably know, it's, it's a fast growing area that's pretty much everywhere nowadays across industry, uh, commerce and scientific research. So pretty much everywhere you look in the world, there's some element of, of data science. Um, and that's because it's now really easy to, to collect, transmit and process data in real time. So we're, we're awash with data. And so data analytics and data-driven decision-making is really driving business and, and research nowadays. Um, so data science as a subject to study is 
really good if you're interested in a degree that will give you skills that are applicable to a wide range of sectors. So, for example, healthcare and finance and even retail and manufacture. And also, of course, um, research itself. And so data science is really um, part of the global economy. But there's a, there's a huge skills gap at the moment. Um, so businesses are crying out for proficient data scientists uh, and those skills are in high demand. And that was a motivation for developing our data science teaching program. Uh, next slide, please. So why would you want to do data science at, at UH? Well, we have an excellent um, uh, teaching program in general, uh, but this is underpinned by world leading research. Uh, so as I mentioned before, the, the astrophysics, mathematics and computer science research really feeds our teaching. Um, that allows us to update the, the, the course material periodically with the cutting edge research. And we also have awesome res resources. So you've seen the Bayfordbury Observatory, which is great for astrophysics. It's also great for, for data science projects. But we have excellent computing laboratories and you'll be able to make use of our high performance computing cluster. And recently that's had a half a million pound investment um, in GPUs, graphical processing units, including uh, an NVIDIA DGX uh, box. Uh, and that's great for deep learning applications. And so you get hands-on um, experience with, with that facility and also uh, uh, a really nice new data science visualization laboratory. Uh, next slide, please. So our, our, de our degrees are accessible to what we call near and fast STEM students. Um, so if you're coming in with not much experience of programming, we're equipped to, to get you up to speed through a, a intensive boot camp at the start of the program, where we teach you the, the core math stats and programming. And it's a, a really a blend of theory and practice. So we give you the, that fundamental background, but also lots of experience in, in laboratories as well exposing you to the to the latest tools. Um, so we have various routes. Some of you might come on the one year route, which is uh, can be taken full time or part time. Uh, and the two year route is split between uh, the sandwich mode, where you go on a, a one year professional placement. Again, you can go into a placement uh, that has any relevance to data science. So again, that's a huge range of potential employers. Um, but also the advanced research route where you get um, to experience sort of research uh, within the department, working with a member of staff and joining in both September and, and January entry points. So just a, a brief overview of, of what you'll cover in data science. So as I mentioned, fundamental maths and statistics that underpins all of data science our program is, is mostly Python based. Uh, we do cover some other languages, but almost exclusively Python as that's what's in, in most demand by employers. Uh, so you'll learn to develop your own algorithms, solve problems hands-on, and really be exposed to a wide range of machine learning techniques, including neural networks, and deep learning. Um, we have a, a huge emphasis on, on practical learning. So in class, uh, laboratories in, in computer labs, but also a large 60 credit project. Again, it's uh, uh, an opportunity to, to really get your teeth into a data science project that spans several months. Um, next slide, please. I think that's it from me. So I'm happy to answer any questions at the end. Excellent. Thank you very much, Jim and Katerina as well. Um, as colleagues have said, we will be going to Q&A at the end of the slide. So if you do have any questions now about what we've discussed so far, feel free to pop those questions in the Q&A and we'll be coming back to those. Just, just a few more slides left um, to help you prepare for the start of term and then we'll be going to the Q&A. OK, so most of you on this call, you will be at various stages of your application journey. Um, so you've likely got your conditional offer. Um, you will be clearing your conditions on there if you haven't already done so. So do be mindful about your emails that are coming through from the admissions team asking you what to send in next. Um, 
You'll also be invited to pay your £5,000 deposit to secure your place on the course as well. That'll be part of your condition. So if you haven't already paid that, now is the time to do so. And some of you might also be invited to complete a sponsorship interview or financial checks as part of the last stages of your application. If those are required from you, you will get an email from the admissions team just confirming what you need to do, a little bit of guidance on those extra conditions as well. And once you've cleared everything, um, that's when they can start issuing your CAS for you. So CAS are being created now because we can issue them at this point in the cycle as well. Um, so some things that you can do now, as well as clearing your conditions, is the university's actually created a free online module just to help you get ready to study at Hertfordshire. Um, so you can access it using this link that is on the page. We'll share that in the chat with you as well. But the module covers things like um, how to navigate around the campus when you get here, um, what the online learning platforms like StudyNet and Canvas look like, how you'd access your timetable information. There's also some tips on there about um, what previous students wish they'd known before they started um, and also access to the support teams on campus as well, like the wellbeing team, the Dean of Students team. Um, so do check that out. It will help you hit the ground running when you arrive in September. Another thing you should be thinking about is your accommodation booking. Now, you can book your accommodation now. So if you're looking to stay on campus, which is what we do recommend, um, just because it has a few extra perks that come with it, such as all your um, utility bills and your Wi-Fi and your contents insurance is included in the price. You've also got 24-7 support right on campus. So if you accidentally lock yourself out of your room or anything, you've got that support network just around the corner. Um, so you can apply for accommodation on campus um, and you'll be allocated your room once your deposit payment has cleared. So when you do your application, the system will ask you what your room preferences are, which campus you prefer to live on, and the accommodation team will always try and give you one of your top choices if that room type is still available. If you are looking to live off campus, um, it's very important, please make sure that you do use PAL accredited landlords when you are searching for off campus property. So what PAL is, it's a scheme that the university set up with the local council just to make sure all the properties displayed on the PAL website, the images match what the property looks like, um, all the goods inside the property are in a good state of repair, like the washing machine um, or the oven or the fridge freezer. And it also means that your deposit that you might have to pay for your accommodation is held securely as well. If you are staying off campus, you also need to be mindful of commute times, commute costs as well. You might have early morning or later evening lectures. Does your bus route allow you to get to those and get home safely as well? Which is another reason why we do recommend staying on campus or at least in the Hatfield area so that you can just walk to lectures and you don't have to pay the additional commute costs. Um, and also, as we said, keep an eye out for any emails from the admissions team so that you're clearing your conditions and working your way towards your CAS. Now, we're just going to do another quick poll. This one um, is just to get an idea of what your fellow uh, classmates have done before. So um, have you ever been to the UK before? We know that some people, they might have not had a passport before when they're traveling in September. That may, might be the first time you've ever flown on a plane, um, which is absolutely fine. We are going to support you and give you guidance. So I'm just going to launch this poll now. Um, just so that you can get an idea of what your fellow classmates have experienced as well. So if you do want to take part, you can see those buttons on your screen. Um, and it's just to see who's been to the UK before, who hasn't, and who might need a bit of extra support. So I can see a lot of you are answering now, which is excellent. So I'll just leave that open for another minute or two. Excellent, lots of answers coming in. Almost everybody has taken part in this poll, which is excellent. Thank you very much for joining in. Okay, I'm gonna close the poll now. So if you are just submitting your answer, um, this is your last few moments to press the button. 
perfect. So I've closed the poll in and I'll share those results on screen so we can see that most of the people in the room haven't been to the UK before. So it's all going to be a very new experience. Um, so we will give you that extra support that I mentioned as well. Now, um, some things that we do do at the university to help you in that journey um, is we will be making a pre-arrival guide. This will be available on the Hertfordshire website and it'll include things like packing checklists, um, FAQs, how you get from the campus um, to the airports and back again, the free airport collection that the university does as well. So there'll be a lot of information about that once that's ready, because at the minute it's got the information on for the January intake that passed previously. So once we'll, everything's been updated on there, um, we will email around everybody so you can have a good read through that. Take your time with that as well. Now, alongside the guide, we're also going to be doing some live webinar sessions similar to this session today, uh, which is all just focused around pre-arrival so things that you need to make sure that you've thought of um, how to navigate an airport um, what to know about putting in your hand luggage versus your hold luggage and also how to book onto that free airport collection as well which should be opening later in the summer so please do join those sessions the invites will usually start coming out to you in around July time and the sessions are usually in August with the last few in September as well just before you travel now, travel requirements for the September intake. Um, so the UK has eased a lot of their restrictions around COVID. So you no longer need to take COVID tests in order to travel to the UK. You don't need to fill in a passenger locator form or quarantine on arrival as well. If any of those guidelines do change, we will be covering those in our pre-departure sessions. But as things stand at the minute, you don't need to do anything that the January intake people had to do. So it should be a lot easier for you and less to think about and plan. Now, you do need to be mindful of your own country's travel restrictions. Do check if they've got any rules about um, if you need to take any tests before you get to the airport. Do you have to wear a mask on your flight for your airlines restrictions? So check out those. And also, if you're taking any flights where you're doing a transfer flight, so you might be stopping over in another country, you need to check what the rules are for the transfer country as well. Now, once you do get here and you're in the UK and you're on campus, there will be lots of events to help you settle in for your first few weeks. Um, so before the freshers week there's actually an orientation week um, which you're more than welcome to come to it's free activities for the week now usually the airport collection will be the saturday and sunday just before the orientation week which is one week before the start of term so you're probably looking around the 17th of september for this year um, during the orientation week and the freshers week there's lots of different things so they'll be doing trips to um, the local supermarkets to show you how you'd get there, how you use the self-service checkouts. Um, there's usually some trips to neighbouring cities like St Albans, um, social sessions, a chance to meet the societies as well and sign up if you want to. You'll be able to meet the students union representatives who will be there to um, help you as well settle into your time. And Regarding the clubs that are on the campus as well, if there is a particular interest that you've got that a club doesn't already exist for, you can speak to the students union and they'll help you set up a club for that so you can meet fellow students who've got the same interests as you. Um, if you're into sports, there are sports clubs that you can join. Um, some of the clubs will represent the university in competitions against other unis. And you don't have to be an expert. There's something for all abilities. So even if you're an absolute beginner and it's a sport that you haven't tried before, you can get involved and you're more than welcome to attend those sessions. There's also chaplaincy and religious groups as well. Um, and lastly, I know that some of you might still be a little bit anxious about COVID. So we just wanted to reassure everybody that the university has created a COVID secure campus just so that our students and teaching staff can feel secure um, and continue with the learning environment as well. So what does the secure COVID secure campus look like? So there's been increased cleaning around the campus area. So this is the communal areas. Um, the teaching rooms and the food sections as well. 
There's also food delivery options available from the on-campus shop. So if at any point you did need to isolate at all during your time at the university, if you need to get a food delivery and you're living on campus, you can get a delivery to your room from the on-campus shop as well through the app. And if you haven't been able to get the COVID vaccine in your own country, um, it doesn't matter, don't worry, you can still travel without having the vaccine. And once you're registered with a GP in the UK, you'll be able to get the vaccine in the UK for free. There's no charge for it. Um, once you're registered with a GP, just tell them um, if you haven't been able to get it or if you've only been able to get sort of one dose or no booster yet, and they'll make sure that you're booked in to get the top ups that you need as well. Um, so what we'll do now, everybody, if anybody does have any questions, we're going to go to the Q&A. Please put them in the Q&A box at the bottom so that we don't miss them in the chat. Um, but please feel free to ask us anything about your programmes, um, arrivals, and we'll try and help you as much as we can. So I'm just going to see what questions we've got coming through. Okay, so I can see that somebody um, has asked about um, what happens if they need to arrive a little bit later than the start of term. Um, now, we wouldn't recommend that at all. There is key learning throughout um, your academic season. So that includes right at the start of term. You've got plenty of time at this point to make sure that you can arrive in time because we've still got sort of three and a half months before term starts so you do need to be making your arrangements now worst case scenario if something unexpected does happen um, that is impacting your travel you do need to contact the international office who will have to review your specific circumstances speak to your program leader speak to the school and see if if you're allowed to arrive any later than the start of term but at this point you should you should be in a position to make plans as though you are going to arrive on time just because you've got so much notice there as well. Um, I'm just looking for a few other questions. So Maybe I don't I know. Could, could, yeah. I, could I just add something because there's questions that we've been answering the, in the chat, but there might be other people that have similar questions. So just to briefly tell you the, the differences between, say, the MSc astrophysics and the MSc astrophysics with advanced research, which is the same for theoretical physics or the data science one. So for the MSc astrophysics, you do you have a one year um, top program and then you're supposed to do your research um, during the summer months. So you have a one project research. You can then, if you do with the advanced research, then you have an extra year on top of that where you'll be doing your advanced research. There is also a possibility of changing from one to the other and moving on to the advanced research component as long as you successfully complete the, um, the top part. So th there's deadlines to change, but this is possible during, during the year as well. And another thing that's also available in the MSc astrophysics um, is that you have an option of taking on the data science boot camp at the beginning, before the, the, the start of term. And you can always use it as a refresher to remind you of any maths or statistics or Python that you, you feel like you would help with your degree. Excellent. Thank you very much, Katerina. If there are any questions as well that you see that you do want to answer, let me know. Otherwise, I'll just sort of read them out as we go. Um, now, some people are asking, I can see a lot of questions about CAS. When are people going to get their CAS? So we can actually issue CAS now if you've cleared all your conditions um, for your offer, paid your deposit and also completed any sponsorship interview or financial checks that you might have been invited for. So if you are at that stage, the university is processing CAS now. If you're not at that stage yet, don't worry, there's still plenty of time, but you just need to make sure that you are clearing those conditions to get you closer to CAS point. If you're not sure about your specific circumstances and what you need to do next, do get in touch with the international office um, at international at hearts.ac.uk and we can always have a look for you as well. Um, now I can see a question here that might be for Jim. Um, so we've got a um, an applicant asking, can a person without a technical background do data science? 
Thanks, Cap. Yeah, so our data science program is designed to be as accessible as, as possible to, to people who might not have come from a traditional STEM background. So it is um, possible to, to be successful on the course if you haven't done um, the mathematics, statistical or programming based um, undergraduate degree. Um, and that's why we run this intensive boot camp at the start of the course. So this is two weeks where uh, we give you uh, quite an intensive burst of um, teaching, covering the core math stats and Python programming and assuming you've come in with, with zero knowledge of those subjects. Um, so it is possible to come in from a non-technical background. However, I would say that, that you, know, you should be prepared um, to, to really participate in the boot camp. In that case, um, we provide extensive notes and resources to get you up to speed. Um, and if you complete that, then you'll be well set up to go on to the main modules. Um, so the boot camp is a zero credit module, so it doesn't count towards uh, your final mark, but it is compulsory. Um, so we expect you to to participate and complete the, the exercises that we set. But we try to provide as much help as possible for those without a technical background. Excellent, thank you very much. Um, I've got a few questions here as well that I don't know if colleagues can help with. So we've had a few people asking regarding um, placement options. Is there a criteria for getting placed for the MSc Astrophysics? Um, what happens if people can't secure a placement? How likely is that? So I don't know if colleagues can give a bit more information um, about. Yes. So uh, if you want to do the, the MSCs with a placement, um, then there is during your first year, your top uh, part, uh, you should be looking for, for your placement. And then on successful completion of your top part, you can go on to the placement. And we have quite a lot of support, both at the department and the university to help you find the placement. So we have um, a placement tutor within the department. We also have a careers, uh, a dedicated careers person um, uh, in the department as well. And on top of that, we have the career service at the university. And so you can use all those um, uh, people to help you secure a placement if indeed that's what you want to do and of course the placement year would be the second year after your top um, placement of course if you think that you want to do a placement now and you start uh, you apply for that and then in the end you decided oh actually I don't think I want to do the year of the placement then you can revert back to the just to the one year um, as well uh, I'm trying to see if there's any more questions about the placement that I haven't covered. Um, I think you've covered everything there, Katarina. Thank you very much. Um, I can see a few other people asking about when does the orientation week start as well. Um, so usually for most courses, um, the start of term is usually about the 26th of September. Do check your specific offer letter though for your course. So the orientation week that starts on 19th of September. So that's the one week before term starts with our airport collection, um, usually on the 17th and 18th of September from Heathrow. We will be emailing out more details about that once that's finalized and you can start booking onto that as well if your travel um, route allows it and you're flying into Heathrow. But that's usually when the orientation week is. So in terms of, of dates to, to pay the deposit and uh, dates to start the orientation week, I, I'm assuming that this is information that you should be getting with your letter from the university. Isn't that correct, Kat? Yeah, that's... For this coming academic year, the, the boot camp starts on, on the 19th of September. Is that correct, Jim? Which is the same as the... Which is two weeks before the start of uh, term. That's the, that's the aim, um, and we're just finalizing the exact um, timetable for the boot camp. The yes. idea is it, it sort of proceeds, it slightly precedes the main teaching modules. Okay, so I, I can see now that there's a question about fees. Um, 
So th there's deadlines for fee payment, which are set by the university, and they will be on the website. Um, and I'm assuming that this should be within the, so this is not something that we decide in a department, this is all university wide. I can try and look for the uh, fee time. There's yeah. the, the installments I, are, are set on dates on the website as well. Yeah, I think usually for, for our international cohort, because you'll have all had to pay your 5,000 pound deposit um, to secure your place on the course. So I can see some of you are asking about that. You, you can pay your deposit now. Now is the time to be paying it. If you've received your student ID, you've got your conditional offer. And then usually the liability dates, which, yeah, they are on the website. Um, you usually have to have paid a certain percentage of your fees by set dates of the year. Um, I believe the first liability amount is about... Um, you need to have paid about 65% of your first year tuition fee, but your £5,000 deposit does go towards that. So you just have to top up a little bit more, usually around October time. But do check those. They'll have been emailed out to you so you can check on the link, but they are on the website as well if you want to go and check back on them. So there's, there's a question. I would like to know the total credit score of masters in data science with placement here. Um, I'm, I'm not sure I understand that question. So if you could, what do you mean? Um, you mean how, how many credits in total you get? Sorry, if you could explain a bit more, I might, I might try and um, help you with that. Another question is how many days can I arrive earlier in the UK? I, I guess the, the... it's it's usually around a month. So on on your visa and CAS allowance, usually you can arrive. Um, up to about a month earlier than your course start date. So it'll say that on your CAS, so you can check it once you've been allocated your CAS. Um, but ideally, we'd recommend that you arrive around that airport collection orientation week because you need to make sure that your accommodation contract um, starts for when you're going to be arriving. Please don't arrive without any accommodation booked because um, you need to make sure that you've got somewhere to stay, somewhere to um, to take your things and sleep overnight as well. So alongside the dates on your CAS, make sure that your travel aligns up with when you can access your accommodation. So good morning, Christopher. So you'd like to join the MSc Astrophysics and you've received your conditional offer letter. And due to some delayed scene result announcement, um, I, I'm assuming, as long as your results come up before the start of the program I don't see the problem of you joining the program in October if you had an offer um, if, if you believe that those um, results would be so later than the start of the program can I please ask you to email me and then I can try and, and sort out your um, your particular um, inquire I can see a few people asking about their sort of credibility sponsorship interviews as well. When, would, when will they get their sponsorship interview? So if you're at the point in your application where you're ready for interview, um, we'll have sent you an email just explaining what you need to do, what ways you should prepare, and if you need to upload a short declaration beforehand as well. Um, once you've updated your declaration video, um, we will then be contacting you via telephone just to go through that. Please don't worry. Um, we are working through everybody as quickly as we can if at the point when we contact you it's not a suitable time just let us know on the phone um, and we will call you back another time as well um, if you are worried at all again you can email us at international at hearts and we can check your file but as long as you followed the instructions in the invitation email we've sent you you are in the in the queue you'll be processed as quickly as we can So the MSc Astrophysics project, when do, when do the student preparation start for the project, you mean? I mean, you would have contact with any possible uh, supervisors of your project from, from the moment you start studying for the MSc. Uh, right? As a smallish department, you will have contact with a lot of people. And so you can start from the beginning thinking what type of research you want to do for your, for your project and start the preparation whenever you feel prepared to do it. I 
I can um, see we've got another question um, regarding sort of lecture hours and, and what days of the week. I know they'll vary depending on what program you're doing, if there's any modules that you pick as well. Um, but I don't know if colleagues, if you've got an idea of the, the rough amount of lecture hours, if lectures will just be expected to be Monday to Friday or if people might have any weekend lectures they might be invited to. So there's there's a question about the the positive stop from the second of June by the university. I, I don't think you that's, might have appeared. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. That's only for certain courses which have already filled up to capacity. Um, so the people on this call, you might you might have friends that are coming to the university on different courses which have had an earlier deposit deadline. Um, but the people on this call, I don't think you have received that email. So you might have just heard about that from your friends. So you just need to follow the guidance that has been sent to you because that's for your specific situation. Um, but it is it is deposit time. So if you are in a position to pay at the minute, now is the time. But yeah, that 3rd of June deadline was for different programmes who won't be on this session because it's, it's for a different, um, different school. And even... Uh... I think that there might be an issue with, with the dates on the website, but we are still currently accepting the deposits for now, so you should go ahead and, and um, do it. So I'll, I'll take the next question. How many points do we need to pass the data science program? So um, all our MSCs, um, a pass rate on each of the modules is 50%. Um, Could you please say about the lecture hours and days? So the lecture hours can be um, anytime Monday to Friday between say nine and, and, and five usually. Uh, and you, I mean, the timetables should will come out before the start of the term. So you can have an idea of what to expect a few weeks before the start of the term. Um, so semester B placement. So the placement, if you do, if you do the, the top degree with placement, then the placement is on the second year of, um, so again, during the first year, you, you'll, you'll have to find your placement. And then on successful completion of the top part, you can proceed to the placement, which is during the second year. There's a question on the chat about the fees, the difference in fees between the standard program and the program with placement or with advanced research. So at the moment, there is no difference in fees. So it's the same. You pay the one year uh, fees for the program. Excellent. Thank you. And I can see somebody was asking about um, how do they find a placement? Does the university help? So um, there, there is a placements team at the university who will have contacts to placement companies that we know have availability, companies that we might have had students go on placement in the past. However, ultimately, the, um, the responsibility to get a placement is down to you as the student. Um, some placements might be more competitive than others. Um, so do use the placement team, the careers team to help you. Um, but it, it is up to yourself to find it. So as long as you're contacting the right people, you're liaising with the team, you shouldn't have a problem finding one, um, but it, it is your responsibility. So do make sure that you are speaking to people once you get here and using those services. Yeah, and on, on top of that, like I mentioned before, we do have a, a specialized careers person in the department, which is part of SETNET, which is the Southwest, Southeast Physics Network. Uh, which can help you uh, look for the place, as well as a, a, a placement tutor in the department. So I'll take another question. So if the module is optional, do we still need to take the optional module? No. So if you look at the list of modules that you take for the master's, the one that says um, core modules, then there's the ones you're going to be taking. And then within the optional modules, you choose a few that add up to the necessary number of credits to complete the degree. So in September, we take for MSc Data Science, there is no summer, but we will be doing only project for six credits only in the summer days. Yes, that's correct, I believe. Uh, Jim, please correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, yeah, you do have a project for 
60 credits if you're just doing the normal MSc data science. That's correct. Whatever, all of the routes have a 60 credit um, data science project. Which is taken during uh, the summer months as well. Is that correct, Jim? Yeah. Um, I've, got, I've got a couple of questions I can answer live because I've seen them come up a couple of times. Um, what happens if you don't get a placement? So um, to be eligible for a placement, you need to um, pass um, the requisite number of credits. So um, in semester A, that's 120 credits. And if you, if you don't fulfill that criterion, then you'll be put onto the advanced research route. Uh, so the other two year program. So if you if you want to go on a placement, it's really imperative that you pass all of the all of the credits. Um, and the other question was um, the number of credits in each module. So typically we have um, thirty credit modules, fifteen credit modules, and for the for the data science project, uh, sixty credit modules. Um, and as Katharina said, the, the pass mark is is 50%. And most of these modules are a pass overall. So you'll have a number of different pieces of coursework or tests or exams. And your, your final mark for those uh, pieces of work combined, um, if you are above 50%, you pass the module and get those credits. Excellent. Thank you very much, colleagues. Um, now, we're probably coming up to the, the end of the hour now. So what we'll do, everybody, um, unless there's any particular questions my colleagues have seen that they want to answer live, we'll just clear up the last few questions via typed text. Um, but thank you very much for, for giving up your time. Oh, please go ahead, Katerina. I'm just, I'm just going to put the link for the fees uh, from the universities with the fees information, which, which will have the deadlines for the installments of the fees, which might be useful. Oh, sorry, I might have put it just to, let me just, um, everyone, sorry, I'll do this again. Um, so though, let me just answer one last question. Is the laptop needed for MSc astrophysics? Um, th there's computers at the university that, that, you, can, that you can use. Um, so I wouldn't, useful, but, that shouldn't stop you from uh, from uh, um, taking the degree. Also, um, uh, I'll try to answer all the questions in, in, in the chat written now as well, but I would just like to remind people. So I'm on Unibody. So if you go into the university and you get any of our courses website and there's those pop up of chat with people there as well. So I, if you look for me, um, I will be able, I mean, I will answer your questions within 24 to 48 hours. So if there's any question that I've missed now, or if you need help uh, looking for the stage of your application, do contact me there as well. And I'll try to answer your question as quickly as possible. Excellent, thank you so much. And, and thank you very much for everybody who's joined us today. Um, we hope you found the session useful as well. And thank you very much to Katerina and Jim uh, for giving up your time as well. Um, if anybody does have any questions regarding uh, sort of international application processes, so your visa or your CAS, um, anything that you think about after this session, the international office is doing an Instagram live session on the 9th of June. That's at 2 p.m. British summer time. So you're more than welcome to join that. Um, it's just a drop in session and my colleague Mark will be hosting that to answer any questions you've got. Um, we've also in the past done some meet and international student sessions. There will be more of those coming up on our Instagram as well. But if you do want to hear more about the experiences of current international students, how they found their first uh, year of living in the UK, then you can go back and watch Wings session as well that is recorded and on our Instagram TV link as well. Um, and if you do still have questions, please feel free to email us. Um, the email is international at hearts.ac.uk. 
remember to include your ID number on there and then we'll have a look at your specific scenario as well. Um, but thank you very much, everybody. I've just got one final video to play you just as we clear all the typed questions, but we can't wait to welcome you here in September. Thank you.